even though Robert Mueller is repeatedly indicting former Trump associates for lying to the government to process crime. James Comey just gave testimony to Congress in which he lied hundreds of times. Yet nothing has happened to James Comey, yet. President Trump may soon be indicted for campaign finance violations, warn lawless Democrats, yet Hillary Clinton pre-sold White House influence to foreign oligarchs for hundreds of millions of dollars on the assumption that Democrats had successfully stolen the 2016 election. Why are there no arrests of Clinton Foundation associates or Hillary Clinton herself? Robert Mueller's entire appointment to special counsel was based on a lie and an illegally leaked memo from James Comey himself, a friend and associate of Robert Mueller who served as the FBI director when Hillary Clinton's Uranium One scandal was deliberately swept under the rug, allowing U.S. uranium resources to be funneled to Russia and Iran. Yet, somehow, Robert Mueller, James Comey, Hillary Clinton and even Barack Obama who carried out massive international money laundering to fly actual pallets of cash to the Iranian regime are all apparently immune to scrutiny or prosecution. Only Trump associates are accused of crimes while the real criminals of America the deep state appear to be immune to any prosecution or investigation. The deep state Democrats, it turns out, have criminalized politics. No crimes committed by Democrats are investigated or prosecuted, yet Republicans are condemned as criminals merely for engaging in conservative, pro-America politics. Read the book The Russia Hoax by Greg Jarrett, or Spygate by Dan Bongino, for an astonishing overview of the damning evidence against the deep state. How the deep state could be exposed and dismantled soon, that situation may be turned on its head. President Trump is holding all the cards right now, sitting on mountains of currently classified evidence that reveal a pattern of deep, deliberate criminality and treason among deep state operatives like Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok, James Comey, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Brennan and others. At the right moment, President Trump is likely to declassify and release a tsunami of once-secret documents that reveal the truth about the FISA warrant fraud, Obama's abuse of government power, Hillary's treasonous corruption and selling of government influence, treason within the DOJ and FBI, and much more. This will be the most significant document dump in the history of the republic. It will reveal a pattern of astonishing criminality, deception and lawlessness by deep state operatives like Mueller, Cummey, Obama and Clinton. But are there enough honest people still remaining in the bureaucracy to call for the arrest and prosecution of those deep state criminals when the truth comes out? Perhaps there are. The evidence will be damning. Huber and Horowitz have not been idle, and now that a new attorney general is on the way, the good people inside the FBI and DOJ who have been silenced for years have an actionable channel to pursue the criminal indictments of bad actors who have committed numerous felony crimes including treason. But regardless of what happens at the federal level, Trump has another card to play as a last resort if the deep state criminals somehow avoid arrest, activating the citizens to defend the republic by confronting and defeating the deep state. How President Trump could call upon the citizenry to defend America against an illegal political coup run by a lawless anti-America mafia. President Trump may already be aware of this but there are millions of patriotic citizens ready to aid in his defense of America. They are unlikely to act without authorization, however, to take action, they will need to be granted presidential authority. If activated by the president in defense of the nation, they would rally in Washington, D.C. and assist Trump-appointed federal marshals, or other law enforcement officials, in locating and arresting deep state traitors throughout the bureaucracy, including those currently committing treason inside the FBI. DOJ and DHS. Trump would merely need to reactivate all former federal officials and former military personnel, all of whom have sworn an oath to protect and defend the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That oath is a lifetime oath. It does not expire just because you retire or leave federal service. Further, the limitations of posse comitatus do not restrict the deployment of active duty military personnel on U.S. soil if defending the nation against enemy combatants operating within the United States. Thus, Trump could also deploy military police or even active duty military personnel to seek out and arrest enemy combatants who are operating inside the U.S. government. For the record, those enemy combatants must include a long list of currently serving U.S. senators and House representatives who are anti-America communists. Almost all of them pretend to be socialists or democratic socialists, but they all have the same goal, 
the overthrow of the American Republic and a sweeping new authoritarian, communist government in charge of everything. See the film Enemies Within by Trevor Loudon for a detailed list of who needs to be arrested, indicted and prosecuted. Why deep state traitors are enemy combatants. Deep state traitors such as Robert Mueller and Barack Obama can arguably be designated enemy combatants by the president. There is more than enough evidence to be declassified that clearly supports this designation. For example, Obama directly financed the nuclear weapons program of Iran, the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism and a sworn enemy of the United States. Robert Mueller had a hand in funneling uranium to Iran, through Russia, while launching the Russia hoax investigation to clear Hillary Clinton while falsely accusing President Trump of almost the exact crimes that Democrats have committed. Furthermore, a rational person could argue that the Founding Fathers of America have already authorized the citizens to rise up against tyranny when treasonous criminals seize control of the bureaucracy and weaponize the government against the people. The Second Amendment, in particular, was clearly written for the purpose of arming the citizenry as a means to confront and halt the usurpation of power by corrupt government that has become weaponized against the people. Thus, Concerned citizens who see their country under siege from within are already well aware that they may be called upon to restore the rule of law by defeating the deep state criminals who have set it aside for their own quest for absolute power. To be clear, I personally hope we never see blood spilled in any power struggle in the United States. The preferable solution to all this is that the wheels of justice would expose the real criminals and the media would report the truth about shine the light of transparency on the crimes of the Clintons, Obamas and their underlings who represent a political mafia deep state. But we all know that's likely impossible. The media is run by the deep state. The wheels of justice are controlled by traitors. Every institution upon which reasonable people might rely to honor the rule of law has been compromised even overrun by deep state traitors. The idea that the deep state will investigate and indict itself for the crimes it has committed against America is absurd. The lawless bureaucrats have achieved so much control over the government, the media and even the internet that there is likely no defeating them from within. It seems apparent that the only way to defeat the deep state is for the citizens to be called upon to support a small, loyal federal task force in arresting, indicting and prosecuting the traitors who have very nearly overthrown the rule of law and turned America into a banana republic. Will President Trump call upon the citizenry to defend America against the deep state? Will the deep state successfully impeach or even assassinate the president before he can take such actions? Would an impeachment of Trump set off a citizen's revolt anyway? These are important questions for us all to consider.